makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley Spearmint Gum tastes good. It's refreshing. And the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. So chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum often, every day. Millions enjoy it, and you will, too. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his mama Basco in Italy. me. <laughs> you want I should write to you more about America. Well, to begin, over here, everybody is equal. The rich man has got the money, but the poor man has got something better. Unemployment and insurance. <laughs> and also, the men and the women, they both equal in everything. Over here, the ladies, they smoke, they work, they drive the car. Mamma mia, the way they're going, someday they're going to go out to work and let the men have the babies. <laughs> And there's something else about America, Mamma Mia. They do things quick over here. Today is a big hole in the ground. Tomorrow is a big building in the hole. And day after tomorrow, everybody's inside wondering how they're going to be able to pay the rent. <laughs> but you know what the biggest thing they got in America is, Mamma Mia? It's a big business. They got one company, is a Standard Oil. Worth maybe a million dollars, but, but they deserve it. Mr. Rockefeller, he sees the people driving around in the cars, so he's kind enough to invent the gas station. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a big, beautiful, rich country, and every night when I go to my, my night school, I sing... America, I love you. You're like a papa to me. From the ocean to ocean. Hmm, Mamma Mia, it's, it's a lot of traffic tonight. Uh, pardon me, sir. Huh? Oh, you want me? I'm strange in town. Could you direct me to Route 66? 66? Uh, oh, sure. Well, you go you go one the block straight, then turn a left. Then a left, then a left again. Wait, then I'd be back where I started. Sure, but you're strange in Chicago. And I want you should see our beautiful library two blocks up before you go home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, I'm in a hurry. Uh, but uh, 66 is straight ahead, huh? Sure. Just like that little white sign that says on a lamppost. See it over there? Where? What What little white sign? There. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, they should make those road signs bigger. Yeah, I think so, too. Well, thanks. You're welcome. And the next time you're in Chicago, come to me if you get lost. That's right. There should be bigger signs. Hmm. <laughs> All the time. I never saw a fellow all the time. All right, class. Fire Quiet, me. please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Harwood? Here. Mr. Olson? Hey, yes. Mr. Schultz? Tully ho, pip pip on cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, why the sudden British accent? Well, Miss Bolling, I tell you, we got it today a lesson in English, and I just wanted to get into the mood. <laughs> Smile, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's begin the lesson. Uh, yes, Mr. Basco? Hey, Miss Bolling, you think uh, the 66 should be bigger than the lamppost? What? Well, those road signs they got. Don't you think they should be bigger so the people can see them better? 
Ach, a waste of time. You know, the average driver today don't bother to look at the lampos. He's too busy climbing it. <laughs> please, please. Uh, class, I asked you to review the chapter on punctuation marks and your grammars. Mr. Horowitz, you may tell us the reason we need punctuation marks. With pleasure. With punctuation marks, we can show little stops in a sentence. Yes, yes. Now, Mr. Schultz, how do we know when a sentence should have a stop? When it comes to a red light. <laughs> Don't be so funny, Mr. Schultz. Ach, smile, Miss Spalding. I really know the answer. Never mind. No, please, I know the answer. Quiet, Mr. Olson. If we know a sentence should have a punctuation mark. When a pause is indicated in the thought. Himmel, I didn't know the answer. <laughs> That's very good, Mr. Olson. Now, Mr. Basco, you may name three punctuation marks and tell us when they are used. Had the comma, that's used for little pause. And the colon, that's for the big pause. Semicolon, that's a pause too big for the comma and too little for the colon. <laughs> <laughs> you need a roadmap to understand that definition. <laughs> Uh, that was very well put, Mr. Basco. Only one thing I don't understand, Miss Spaulding. Yes, what's that? Why did they put such a small as 66 on a lamppost? <laughs> oh, goodness, not again. Luigi, why the sudden worry about highway signs on the lamppost? Well, it's some strange fella. He's a driver through, through Chicago tonight. He don't know how to get out of the city. And uh, then Mr. He's... Basco, all I can say is there isn't very much you can do about those highway signs. Uh, pardon me, Miss Spaulding, but I would like to correct that statement. This is a democracy where anything is possible. That if a man makes his voice heard, he can move mountains. Listen to him, the Swedish bulldozer. <laughs> Ach, tell me, tell me, what, what is all this talk about? Anybody can get out of Chicago in a minute if he just uses his head a little. Yeah, but how should With a little science. Now, look, they call us the Windy City, right? Yes. All right. Back up your car into a heavy tailwind on Michigan Avenue and whoosh! <laughs> Hello, Albuquerque. <laughs> Luigi, I personally agree with Olsen. America is always open for suggestions. If you think you got a good idea for those signs, you should take it up with the people in charge of the highways. But who's this? <laughs> Any woman driver. <laughs> They drive like they own the roads. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, stop confusing him. In line with what Mr. Olson said, Mr. Basco, if you feel very strongly about those signs, you may stay after class and write to your congressman, telling him how you feel. My congressman? In Washington? Well, yes, many people write their congressman to suggest new laws. And he's not going to be angry with me? Poppy cockle. Why, if, uh, Luigi, even if he does get angry, what can he do to you? Will he hold back your citizen papers? Will he make a speech against you in Congress? Will he turn you over to the draft board? Sure, sir, will he? No. Just before election, they are all angels. <laughs> And so, I hope you like my idea, Mr. Congressman. You see, this is the first letter I'm writing to any government since I'm in America, and to me, is the biggest honor. I wish you luck in the election soon, Mr. Congressman. Signed to yours truly, Luigi Basca, in the ticket shop at 21 and North Hollister Street. And I drop in, if you ever in the neighborhood, I make you a big dinner. Hello? How you like it, Miss Balding? Why, it's excellent, Mr. Basco. I'm proud of you. Now, just add that you're in the 28th District. All right. My beautiful teacher, Miss Balding, uh, says that... Just 28th District. <laughs> well, I thought maybe you'd like to be the congressman's wife. <laughs> 28th District. Yes, that's fine. There. Come on, let me if the congressman has answered this, that I'm going to be so important, I'm liable to stop talking to myself. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Oh, hello, Pascali. I've been waiting for you in your store, little cabbage puss. How come you so late? The teacher kept you after school to help you look a few brains? <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it, Pascali. reason I'm late 
His Amma just wrote the letter to my congressman. What? You wrote to your congressman? Yeah. Yeah, why, why, why Pasquale? Well, uh, Pasquale, talk to me. Why, why are you looking down so sad on the floor? I'm just saying goodbye to a dear departed friend. <laughs> oh, who was it? You. Me? I don't mean ex Xavier Kugatz. <laughs> Pascal, you think, you think he's going to be angry with me for writing? Maybe not, but you want to take some good advice from me, Luigi? Who at the Pasquale? Don't tear up your Italian citizen papers. <laughs> uh, well, now I know you're joking. Joking? You're stupid boob. For you, this is a big catastrophe. <laughs> yeah, but Pascale, why, why should anybody be angry if I'm right to my congressman in a plain little letter about... About making a bigger road to signs on the lamppost. Look, Luigi, it's not so much you wrote about the signs. It's because you complain. It's like being invited to dinner, and when you leave, you say, uh, Excuse me, you got a stomach a pump in the house? <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia, Pasquale, what, what they gonna do with me? Well, they only got one punishment for foreigners who complain about things in America. What? Next week, when the cattle boat leaves the Chicago for Italy, it's going to carry a hundred long horns, a two hundred short horns, and a one green horn. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they're not going to send me back. Mamma mia, why my teacher has told me to write to my congressman? Don't Pistale. blame the poor girl for your troubles, Luigi. She just keeps forgetting you ain't a four-flushed citizen yet. <laughs> well... My boy, if there's anything you want, I should send you to Italy, like uh, chewing a gum or comic book or peanut brittle. Don't say that, to Pasquale. Please, Pasquale, you, my countryman, you brought me here to America. You must think of something for Luigi, me. Luigi, like I said before, you got only one road out of the trap. One road? Mary Rosa. <laughs> All right, that's the trap, and now show me the road. <laughs> All right, Mr. Letter Scribbler, you write to me when you get back to it. Wait, wait, uh, Pasquale, how is it going to help me if I marry Russia? I told you a thousand times, you marry a citizen, that's a contagious. It makes you a citizen right away. <laughs> then you could send even a million of terrible letters to your congressman, and the worst he could do is to cross you off as a free seeds list. <laughs> but, Pasquale, I don't want to get married. There must be some other way. No other way, Luigi. Either you stay a bachelor and lead a single life in Italy, or marry Rosa and lead a double life in America. <laughs> No, wait, wait, Pascal. I'm going to get another way. Huh? I'm going to apologize to my congressman. What? Sure, I'm going to gonna write postcard to put on six-cent stamps and it should go quick and send it to my congressman. Sure, go ahead. But i got to warn you, Luigi, if you do that, you're going to violate America's biggest law. What's that? The ASPCA. ASPCA? Alien sending a postcard airmail. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's how you can please a lot of youngsters this coming Halloween. Get some packages or a box or two of delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. And when the kids come calling for tricks or treats, give them sticks or packages of Wrigley Spearmint. They love to get chewing gum, especially Wrigley Spearmint Gum. And when you give it to them, you know you're giving them a treat that's wholesome and healthful. Then, too, Wrigley Spearmint Gum's an inexpensive treat. You can get enough for all your Halloween callers at very little cost. So get ready for those Halloween bell ringers with Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. You'll enjoy giving it. The youngsters will enjoy getting it. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Mamma me, I wrote a special letter to my congressman and, and apologize for bothering him with a road to 66 signs. All of a sudden, to make him feel good, I promised to help him look for a job if he's a loser. Here's a job in November. <laughs> but I've never been so worried in my life. Luigi, my fellow boober. 
Ach, look at that droopy puss. <laughs> you know, you look like a popsicle that was sitting in the sun too long. <laughs> then, did you send out that letter to your congressman, Luigi? Two letters, just Two? Ach ja, that smart. I forgot congressman has got two houses. <laughs> you miss him in one, you're going to catch him in the other, huh? <laughs> But why, why, why the long face, Luigi? Well, uh, I wrote the two letters because uh, first it was about the roads, signs, and, and, and then Pasquale told me I'm not the other citizen, so the FBI is going to take off of my fingerprints and send them to the ASPCA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that scheming Pasquale. Has he got you for shimmelt? <laughs> now, now, back up, Luigi. Start in the middle and work toward both ends till I catch up with you, huh? Well, sure, sir, I did a terrible thing bothering in Congress about the signs. and Pasquale, that, hmm? Pasquale said. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, stop, Luigi. When will you learn that that Pasquale has got a genuine A1 delicatessen personality? What's that? Whatever comes out of that ham is pure baloney. <laughs> <laughs> How can one little schnook be so gullible? Uh, didn't Pasquale wind up asking you to marry Rosa? Yeah, yeah, but he's only meant that to help me out, Schultz. Ooh, what a dumb cop. <laughs> Luigi, how you've managed to remain a bachelor so long is a secret bigger than the atom bomb. <laughs> Why do you believe everything that Schwengali tells you? Don't you have a mind of your own? You mean I'm, I'm not in a trouble, Schultz? Ach, Luigi, this is a free country. You can write anything to anybody, any time. But if you want to, you can write love letters to Betty Grable and nobody's going to stop you. Nobody? Well, play it safe. Mail the letter while Harry James is on the road. <laughs> That's right, Luigi. Smile. Be happy. Remember this. Half the things we worry about in life never happen. And what's about the other half, Schultz? Well, they... Him, Luigi, now you got me worried. <laughs> Ach, smile, little Wiener Schnitzel. And promise me, no matter what happens, you're never again gonna let that scheming Pasquale fool you. Uh, no, don't worry, Schutz, I'm too smart to know. Well, well, look who we got here. Mr. Pickle Peddler himself. Better a pickle peddler than a pizza pusher. <laughs> Please, please. All right, all right, I'm going, Luigi, but please remember this. You are too smart now, no matter what happens. Yeah, yeah, goodbye, Schultz. Pasquale, now, now you tell me, why you fooled me before? I fooled you? Yeah, what you said about the FBI and the ASPCA after was crazy. Crazy? Yeah, huh? everything you said was just to scare me. You all through? I'm all through. Exclamations appoint the parts of preparing? Exclamations appoint the parts of preparing. In that case, I leave you with just the two words. Mara Rosa. What? What are you talking about? Oh, nothing. Just a little letter come in for you from Washington. Washington? D.C.? It ain't from George. <laughs> hey, look for yourself. All right. Dear Mr. Basco, your letter received and the contents noted. You're a truly mad in the Harrington a congressman in the 28th district. Noted, Luigi. That's like a notarized. That means the congressman was a swearing at you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now read what's printed outside the envelope, the left hand corner. Penalty for private use, $500 of final. Or imprisonment. What this means, Pasquale? Means that when the swallows fly the Capistrano, you're going to wave it to them from Alcatraz. <laughs> They got no reason to... Penalty for private use, Luigi. Private. Are you a private? No. Then pay the penalty. <laughs> Luigi, don't believe me or Schultz. There it is in the black and white. It's a congressman of my run to pay Arrington. Well, what, what am I going to do now? That's up to you. But me, I got to get out of here quicker because by now, the whole neighborhood knows that Pasquale's got a hot greenhorn on his hands. <laughs> Pasquale, wait, wait. Tell me what I should have done, me. Maybe I should fly to Washington right away and apologize in a person. Oh, sure, sure. Right away they give you a quick trial for treason and condemn you to the fire of the squad. No. Yes. And when that happens, Luigi, try and die patriotic. Fall toward the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> well, it's too dangerous to hang around a suspicious alien. So goodbye. No, no, have a smiley. <laughs> Mommy, I got to talk to them quick. But where am I going to find them? I had the telephone book assured. Why, I no ticket. This Congress must have some branches in Chicago. That is, 
Not been on the Congress. Oh, U.S. That's it. U.S. Awning Company, U.S. Bedding, U.S. Metals, U.S. Printing Company. Printing. That's it. They must be in charge of the printing up at the road signs for the U.S. Maybe they're going to help me. Mama, if I ever get out of this trouble, I'm never going to mail another letter. Everything is going to be by the telephone. <laughs> Well, here's the place. U.S. Printing Company. Well, Luigi, pick up your courage, you walk in, apologize it to the U.S. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Oh, you know I'm in trouble, huh? What? I'm a Luigi Basco fellow who's a start up all of the business with the signs. Signs? What signs? Uh, the congressman is not told you yet. Congressman? Um, uh, how many signs are involved, sir? Maybe, m- maybe a million. Wow. Uh, excuse me, sir. Don't run away. Please, I'm going to try to escape. Mr. Farnsworth, there's a Mr. Bosco out here who wants to order a lot of campaign signs for a congressman. Yes, sir. Right away. Mr. Farnsworth will see you immediately, Mr. Bosco. No, no, it's not Harry. He, he can take his time. On the contrary. He's rushing to see you. If it's so many signs, I imagine you'll be spending a good deal of time here. No, no, no I don't want to spend no time. I, I want to get out right away. Well, before you go, we'll have to run off a trial sign. A trial? Am I going to have to have that? Well, certainly. Uh, Otherwise, if the signs come out bad, we'll get shot. You see, this way... Yeah, I know. This way, I'm going to get the shot. (laughs) (laughs) Miss Brenner, what's keeping him? I'm coming. I'm coming. I don't shoot yet. How do you do, Mr. Basco? Come right in. Sit down, won't you? Uh, Mr. Fonsworth, I'm I'm a thank God I live in a democracy. At the least, I'm going to get a trial and... Cigar? No, I'm going to get it, but if you want it or not, then i get the one for you. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Mr. Basco. <laughs> now, what can U.S. do for you? Uh, the, the congressman is, is not told to you yet? No, no, but if you'll tell us just what you want... Please, but... please, I, I want to go home to my antique shop in peace. <clears throat> if the U.S. wants a small signs, make them small. I don't care if nobody sees them. Uh, Mr. Basco, no sign is too small or too big for U.S. If you want, we can make you a sign 300 feet long and 200 feet wide. No, it's a no good. That's never going to fit on the lamppost. <laughs> oh, did, did you want these signs to go on lampposts? Well, where else are you going to put them? Uh, well, just what do you want on these signs, Mr. Basco? No, no, you know, you're not going to get the mad if I tell you? Of course not. What do you want on the signs? Sixty-six. Sixty-six? <laughs> Mommy, me, I knew you was going to get the mad. Sixty-six what? Just the plane, 66. 66. <laughs> Let me understand you, Mr. Basco. You want U.S. to make you up a million signs with just a 66 on them? Well, please, put on any number you want. I don't care if you make a traffic jam all over the whole country. <laughs> just 66, eh? Oh, I get it. It'll be a teaser sign like 5440 or fight, representing the congressman's district, a sort of a psychological inducement to engender public curiosity, huh? Huh? <laughs> I understand Still, Mr. Basco, to attract the masses You should place those signs elsewhere than lamp posts, Like, well, in store windows That's no good The Democrats have got to drive in a store to see which way is in New York <laughs> well, well, have it your way Now, now for the cost Let me see A million signs at, um, well, a dime each Brings it to an even hundred thousand dollars Does that sound fair to you, Mr. Basco? Oh, sure All right <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take $10,000 down You take it down where? <laughs> I'll take it down here Oh, you wanted me to help you carry it <laughs> You're kidding uh, I'm a knight <laughs> Then the U.S. to pay for these things? You want us to finance your campaign? What the campaign is just a traffic sign for my block. Traffic sign? Well, don't you want a million? No, just to make a one for my block. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Pines, where the place is stop hitting your head on the desk. <laughs> Pasquale. Louis. Oh, look, honey, your face super spire, a tongue hanging out, the clothes all mussed up. What's happened? You been chasing airplanes again? <laughs> <laughs> Scotty, do me a favor quick. Sure, what? Let me a hundred thousand dollars. 
<laughs> oh, sure. How you want it? To the nickels or pennies? <laughs> no, Pasquale, please. I'm, I'm in a worst of trouble in my life. The U.S. says I'm going to start it up a letter with the biggest signs, and I got to pay $200,000 for the signs. That's the Congresses are going to take it out from me in the taxes. Luigi, the boat for Italy is parked by the dock now for you. You better take about two words of advice. Who at the Pasquale? Mary Rosa. <laughs> well, all right. This time I'm not going to fight no more. <laughs> Don't bother to thank me for making the biggest sacrifice to Luigi. You can tell the blush of the bride herself. Rosa! 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 <laughs> yes, little honey bunny. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> Hello, Rosa. <laughs> Baby, by next week, some certain girl is going to be walking down the street and they're going to be calling her Rosa Bosco. Oh, that's impossible, Papa. I'm not Luigi's sister. <laughs> oh, shut up your face. <laughs> All right, Luigi, from now on, we got to act the fact. Oh, excuse me, Papa. Luigi, I almost forgot. This letter came to our store by mistake. It's for you. Huh? For, for, for me? Let me see. Washington, D.C., dear Mr. Basco, I presented to you idea concerning the larger road signs before the House Committee on the Highways, and is it being tabled for future consideration. Thank you for your final suggestion. In these times, our country needs such a public spirit to the citizens like yourself. If you get any more ideas, I should be happy to hear from you. Yours are truly mine and a P. Addington. Gee, Luigi, and you thought you were in such trouble. Rosa. Well, well, goodbye, friends. Hey, Luigi, come back here. What's about Rosa? Well, Pasquale, you deserve a very big argument from me, but right now I got only two words for you. Two words? Yeah. Keep her. <laughs> Well, Mamma Mia, I had a big scare today, but everything has come out fine. Mamma Mia, in what other country they let you write into the government and they give ideas? Even a Pasquale, he's becoming a good citizen and he's writing to the government. Right now, he's sitting in his house and he's writing 5,000 postal cards to Congress. He's saying they should have put a 95% tax on a bachelor's from Italy. You know what I'm saying, Vasco, the little immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you to have plenty of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum on hand for Halloween. If you're having friends over, you'll add to the fun by passing Wrigley Spearmint around because it's a refreshing, delicious treat that just about everyone enjoys. Besides, you'll have fun giving sticks or packages of Wrigley Spearmint to the youngsters who come to your door for tricks or treats. It's a treat that's good for them and one they'll really appreciate. When you go to the store, remember to get a supply of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. It costs so little, it tastes so good, and it gives real chewing enjoyment. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at the same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Schiff as Miss Pauling, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olsen, with Hal March as Mr. Farnsworth and Sandra Gould. Music under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Charles Lyon speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.